we having this press conference is to really put out the facts about Mama's place. You may have seen a smear campaign and personal attack being made against me, the Prime Minister, and Attorney General by one Awad Narayan Sharma about Mama's place. And I don't think this can go unchallenged. Let me give out the facts to you today. I visited Mama's place with our Honorable Prime Minister on 7th October 2020 at the request of the residents of Mama's place. Remember, it was after the election. The election took place in 2018, and we visited Mama's place in 2020. The Talanoa session provided an opportune time for residents to get an updated information on the development of the Mbati informal settlement. The facts are as follows. MultiWorks was awarded tender by the Government Tender Board and the civil work commenced in April 2015 for stage one. When the contractor started work, it was going very well without any problem. Unfortunately, the contractor started facing problems at the site caused by few residents. Some informal settlers started obstructing the contractor and several times the contractor was chased away from the site. The contractor could not commence work because they were threatened by few residents as they did not want to remove their houses which came in the way of services needed for the development. Some of them had built their houses where the road was marked because once the scheme plan is done, then the contractor follows the scheme plan. And unfortunately, some residents, some informal settlers came in later on and, and built their houses uh, along uh, the, the, the site that was uh, where the road was supposed to be developed. Now, several attempts were made to rectify the problem but few residents were simply not cooperating. The contractor got frustrated and he left the site in 2019. The ministry continued uh, the dialogue with the residents and some work uh, was undertaken by the contractor, but it came to a point when the contractor decided that it's not possible for him to continue the work. And it wasn't uh, a small work. Uh, the, the whole tender was awarded for $1.4 million for stage one. Uh, during the meeting, uh, the residents also divulged that there were people who owned houses elsewhere but had built properties in the settlement for rental purposes. This person, Awad Narayan Sharma, was also present at that meeting. He kept insisting that there was never been any scheme plan approved for the site. We all know without scheme plan and without engineering drawings, tender cannot be called and tender cannot be awarded to a contractor. The contractor must have two specific documents, which is the scheme plan and the engineering drawings, which the contractor had. While stage one was under construction, the ministry prepared the scheme plan for the rest of the areas, which was endorsed by the town and country planning in 2017. The number of lots increased from 248 to 309 to accommodate all the residents who were there before the scheme plan was prepared and the houses were numbered. I have been the Minister for Housing and Community Development from late 2018, and we cannot allow this person to spread misinformation and politicize this just because election is next week. We all know in 2020 and 2021, Fiji's economy was affected by COVID-19, and also Fiji was struck with four cyclones. Herald was category four, Yasa was category five, in 2021, we faced second wave of COVID-19 and two more cyclones, that is TC, ANA, Category 3, 
and PCB in our category one. He's saying that we promised that the subdivision work will start in 2020, but we only met the residents on 7th of October 2020. Obviously, it's not possible because the financial year ended in July of 2020. So you can see how he has been spreading misinformation. Uh, he's trying to use this campaign to spread lies simply because he's supporting NFP. That's fine, you can support NFP, but do not spread lies because there are other residents living at the site and I have been communicating with them regularly. He has also made some wild allegation. For example, he stated that he received a call from AG's office at 11 p.m. AG never met this guy or made anyone to call him. He is again lying to the public. Recently, I visited Mama's place because he has been spreading lies in that community. In that meeting, he claimed that no work was ever carried out in that settlement and there was no approved scheme, uh, scheme plan. Now, in the video, if you have watched, he's saying that four chain of road was constructed and the tractor arrived before election in 2018. But the construction work started in 2015 and the contractor pulled out in 2019 after several attempts were made by the ministry for him to complete the work. In fact, uh, we had given extension of time to the contractor to please complete stage one, but he could not continue with the work. So it is utter rubbish, whatever he is uh, spewing out at the moment. The construction, as I said, started in 2015 and the contractor withdrew from the site in 2019 after we could not resolve the matter. So this has nothing, these dates have nothing to do with past elections or what he's claiming that the tractor came just before the election and the tractor disappeared after the election. Nothing like that happened. And you know, you all can also interview the multi-works director, the contractor who was awarded this tender. So recently I was at Mama's Place and at that meeting I promised the residents of Mama's Place that I will return and show them the approved scheme plan, which I did. This person was invited to this meeting. Do you think he will turn up? Of course he did not turn up at this meeting. The residents appreciated and understood that the government's intention is to develop the site. But unfortunately few residents were troublemakers and threaten the workers at the site with a knife. At this meeting, I also advise that for any further clarification, they are free to contact the Permanent Secretary for Housing and Community Development, who is, re who is responsible for implementation of the projects. Now he's discouraging the people of Sakoda. He's saying that, you know, it will be the same fate. Just because election is next week, uh, Sakoda people will see the tractor and the tractor uh, uh, and the diggers and everything else will disappear. Well, you all know that in the last four years we have completed three uh, settlements and these three settlements are Dubu, Lendusasa and uh, Waindamu Damu simply because the residents in this settlement, they cooperated they worked very well with the contractor and the ministry. So his claim is unfounded and uh, he's trying to discourage the people of Sakoda. But just for your information, Sakoda uh, is an area which was taken up by TLTB to develop. So TLTB initially decided to develop the area and after that uh, it was given to Mukesh Naidu and uh, Mukesh Naidu tried to develop the place and you all know that he took the money and he could not do the job and he left and the case is before the court. 
Then the same plot was given to another gentleman and he could not develop the area, so he gave the development lease to the government. So we have got the development lease and we are now developing Sakoda. So in other words, we are able to uh, uh, do this work uh, simply because the development lease is with the government. If the development lease was not given to us, to Ministry of Housing and Community Development, this uh, subdivision work, we could not have done anything. And the people of Sakoda are, are pleased with the development simply because they know that uh, Mukesh Naidu had taken the money, he took substantial amount of money, and uh, he did not do any work there. Just like the PCN case, the government stepped in uh, to pay uh, the, the, the residents in G2 estate, if you recall, uh, they had paid money to PCN, and then PCN could not do anything, and we had to, the government had to refund that money to a tune of more than $3 million, which the government did. Similar situation with Sakoda. Uh, if the government had not taken the development lease, that area would never be developed because there was no one to develop that place. So he's, uh, this gentleman, Awad Naran Sharma, is trying to compare Mama's place with Sakoda, which are two different uh, types of development, two different types of land and the issues are different as well. I think um, uh, this uh, Mr. Awad Naran Sharma cannot believe that Fiji First is moving with the developments and our achievements cannot be digested by those opposing Fiji First government. And as I mentioned, we have completed three subdivisions and there are many other subdivisions which is in different development phase. And uh, in the last budget, if you have followed the last budget, the money was given to Ministry of uh, Housing and Community Development to develop 12 other informal settlements. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you have any queries regarding this development, I encourage you to contact the Permanent Secretary for Housing and Community Development and he'll be able to provide a lot more information. But for your information, I just want to show you a couple of things um, that might clear some of the misinformation this gentleman is spreading. First thing I want to show you is the scheme plan, which is here, stamped, approved by Town and Country Planning. I also want to show you this is the contract which was signed by MultiWorks with the government. Okay, so these are two important documents which I have with you. So I will stop here and if you have any question, you may ask. Thank you.